Okay, this is Brother Johnny of Groove 19 Promotions out of Manning, South Carolina. Sincerely thanking everyone for tuning in to this installment of the 19 Report. As promised, we will be coming back to you with commentary on mental illness, worlds apart in on the 19 Report. I also would like for everyone to, uh, if you can, if you have a Google account, to join up with us on Google at Groove 19. That's um, on Gmail at Groove 19. If you can do that, because we're going to start to um, we're going to start to have roundtable discussions, and we want to be able that that you will be able to call in to the station while we're on the air. And in order to do that for free, you have to connect with us on Google on um, Gmail. And once you connect with us, you will be able to either we will call you or you will call us on today. We're going to be talking about this is actually part one of several parts of the commentary that we will be doing on mental illness. Of course, mental illness is a serious um, problem in the black community that is not being addressed in some cases that people, according to statistics, are afraid that they will be ostracized or that they will be fired from their job or that they will be labeled as crazy if they go to try and get some assistance for mental illness. What we want to do today is start at the very beginning of what is the root of, the cause of mental illness, in particular in the black community. Now, I'm black. And when you see my face and you see the color of my skin, you'll know that I'm black. So my uh, passion, my concern is for black people. And But if there is someone out there that is concerned about white people or other races, well, that's fine, too. But our topics, our discussions, our point of interest will be black people. If there are any people of any other race that has something that they would like to include in the commentary, Um, If you would like to make financial donations to the Community of Concerned Citizens uh, nonprofit organization, just get in contact with me or you can contact us on our, um, you know, through our email at Groove 19. But until such time, we're going to be talking about black issues from a black perspective because black people are in a lot of trouble And we don't know it because we're dancing, we're partying, we're shouting, we're screaming, we're entertaining ourselves out of the reality of what is really going on. So now we want to go directly into um, the discussion topic for today, which is black mental illness. Our disconnection from God. Now, again, for anyone that is watching me, you know that I'll be looking up over the camera. That's because my monitor a teleprompter is above the camera, so my eyes will be up above the camera. And also, I'm working computers to my right, your left, my left, and your right. Uh, the mental illness. What is mental illness or mental disease? Any disease of the mind. The, psych- the psychological state of someone who has emotional or behavioral problems serious enough to require psychiatric intervention. What is a disease? A pathological condition of a part, organ, or system of an organism resulting from various causes, such as infections, genetic defect, or environmental stress, and characterized by an identifiable group of signs or symptoms, a condition or tendency as of society regarded as abnormal or harmful, again, obsolete, lack of ease, or trouble. This ease is the lack of ease. It's with one's mind body or spirit is in this ease. So when you contract a cold, when you get a cold, which many of us have uh, colds now today, your body is in this ease. Something has been knocked out of whack to where it's not firing as it should. And it's causing dis ease in the systems of the body, which allows uh, viruses to attack the system and cause us to be sick. So we try to take either medication or we try to um, limit the outdoor activity or whatever is necessary for us to get ourselves back into an ease state. So when a person is in dis-ease physically, they either have a cold or diabetes or some form of disease. But when we are in dis-ease mentally and spiritually, it is a whole 
another um, attack on the body and mind altogether. So the mind, what is the mind? The mind is the element of a person that enables them to be aware of the world and their experiences, to think and to feel the faculty of consciousness and thought. Now, if any one of you have ever heard one of my commentaries, it was suggested to me to use more visual um, um, uh, to, to use more visual guides to my commentaries. But I, I was looking at YouTube last night on a lot of different topics and they use a lot of visuals. My concern about the visuals is that you, we will get so caught up into the visual that we will begin to believe the picture, the music, the image, and not necessarily listen to the words or go back to research what is being said enough that we will see for ourselves if the person talking to you is telling the truth. So what I want, by God's permission, is for you to research what is being said, and if it is the truth, then bear witness to the truth. We are talking about black mental illness, but we're talking about it, first of all, from a perspective of our disconnection from the God force that is in the universe, the God force that created us, our uh, descent into hell and our desire to remain in hell and how that desire is disconnecting us from the God force. Now, time is a bearer of witness that the proper way to treat any illness, rather it is mental or physical, is to try and track or trace back to the source of the problem. Doctors, psychologists, and psychiatrists try to find the root of the problem in order to diagnose it and take the proper course of action to eliminate or control the problem. Now, we are in a state of dis-ease, black people. We have a problem. We don't want to admit that we have a problem because we don't want to be ostracized from the people who think they don't have a problem. So if you talk to anyone in the church today, they forget they had a childhood. They always think they were holier than thou. So when you are talking to them, it is as if though to them they never did anything wrong. That is a mental illness. You're in denial of the reality of who and what you really are. And so you, we are lying to ourselves, which is the biggest lie. Because when you lie to yourself, you lie to God. But we're lying to our children, which is a bigger lie. Because when you lie to them, you're lying to the future. So we are a bunch of hypocritical liars. Our grandparents, we are. We hide things that we know may be the cause of our children to be the way that they are, but yet we hide those things. We're talking about mental illness, and we're taking it back to the uh, place where it began, which is in the beginning of the book or the Bible, the book of Genesis. Every single person on the planet Earth suffers from some form of mental illness. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're a psychiatrist. I met a psychiatrist who actually takes um, Prozac. Psychiatrists taking the drug. Every single one. Our illness comes by way of our rebellious ancestors and their desire to be a God besides the one true God. Again, our illness comes from by way of the rebellion of our grandparents, our great grandparents and their desire to do what they want to do when they want to do it. Now, in the beginning, those things were done in private. So you have a lot of people who would hide men in their closet. They would bring a man home and tell you, say hey to your Uncle Jake. And next week, they'll bring another man, and that'll be your Uncle Mickey. But they were lying to themselves and lying to you because we wanted to create a world where the, the, the desires of our heart, we could engage in those desires and not feel guilty about the sins that we've been committing. In 2013, we are being taught in the churches, in the religious institutions, to let it go. Forget about your past. So in that forgetting, we forget the evils that we've committed against ourselves and against others. And we actually believe that we will never have to be held accountable for those evils. Yet the church teaches that God writes down everything in a book. So now history has proven that every race of people has been exiled to live out their desires on an area of land that they can call their own. In some cases, man strays so far off of the path that he eventually goes completely savage. We're talking about mental illness. 
Going savage is a mental illness. Doing what we want to do, being who we want to be in disregard to what God desires for us is going savage. So it is a mental illness. Now, the only race of people that have gone savage are white people. The only race of people that lived in the caves and hillsides of Europe are white people. This is a fact. This is not racism. This is not attacking white people or trying to degrade white people because you can't degrade white people. They have built a world based on the knowledge that they were given from Moses. So they built a world that is the best that we have ever seen. America. As in the case of some Africans and Indians, and of course the Caucasians or the white race who had devolved to the point of apes. So when you see this evolution of the ape, to the white man walking upright, that's actually in reverse. The evolution comes from white man to ape. They were, and that's why they use the term, I'll be a monkey's uncle because they are the uncle of the ape uncle of the monkey. They love being around monkeys. This is not a uh, attack on them. This is a reality that we have to begin to see. This is a mental illness. And the mental illness came about because we decided that we wanted to do things the way we want to do it and how we want to do it. Now, this Caucasian was in the caves and hillsides of Europe. He was a a cave dweller. This is a fact. And so now he's depicted in movies and, and everything else as this great man. But they never want to go back to that point of origin, how they became so great. This actually happened because of our rebellion from God's law. We're talking about mental illness, but, and I want you to be patient with me if you can. And if you can't hold on to the entire commentary, listen to five minutes of it, go away from it. And the next day, listen to five more minutes, because this information is coming from sources in Chicago and New York and many other places, but it's not coming from South Carolina. And it won't come from South Carolina because there's no one commissioned to teach it that way. <clears throat> so we're talking about mental illness. Now, the prophet Moses was sent to the Caucasians in the caves to teach them how to live. This is a fact. It's not mentioned in the scripture the way it is written in message to the black man by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. <coughs> but it is a reality. Excuse me. I, I have a cold or something, you know, the scratchy throat and everything. And I apologize for that. But I was commissioned to do this broadcast today. And so I'm doing it today. By God's permission. Now, the we're talking about Moses. And how Moses raised the Caucasian from an ape level to this white man that you see before you who has mastered everything, the air, the water, everything, everything that we use, everything that we are. He did it based on the teachings that he got from Moses commissioned by God to do it. Now, all of these illnesses are as a result of rebellion against God's law. That rebellion has caused the very soul of man to be in a state of severe dis-ease. The disease of the soul or the rebellion of the man and mankind against God caused a great separation between God and his creation, which in turn forced us to try to find a point of ease. So we can't find the ease that comes from being connected to the God force. So we had to make that ease. And what do you think that ease consists of? Money. That's why the book of the Bible says that money is the root of all evil, because money is trying to take the place of God. Money is not evil. Money has its place. I want a lot of money. I want so much money and the mind to use the money properly. But money in itself is the root of the evil because money is replacing that ease that we feel when we are connected to God. So we take that money as a God besides God. And this is in the book. Now the disease of the soul or the rebellion of the man and mankind has caused a separation between us and God, which in turn forced us to find a point of ease or a comfort zone without the assistance of our creator. 
The allegorical story of Adam and Eve in the Bible of, in the book of Genesis is a reflection of our rebellion. No one ever tells you this about Adam and Eve, but they were mentally ill. How else could God create you, make you, give you everything? And you, you listen to a whispering voice in your ear that tells you God is jealous of you. He don't want you to have nothing when he's already given you everything. This is the conflict between parent and child today. The child grows up thinking that the parent is against them. So the child in their mind have already put together a battle plan. I'm going to show my mama. I'm going to show my daddy. This is a mental illness that started in the book of Genesis and is put there to teach us. But all we want to know is Eve bit the apple and Eve sinned against the Lord. That's allegorical teaching that is meant for a bigger mind to grasp it, break it down and give it back to the people to warn them of what what is coming to us. If we don't pay attention to the warnings in the book, <coughs> excuse me. Now, the allegorical story of Adam and Eve in the Bible is a reflection of the rebellion and the mental illness that is beyond the reach of any man or any man made medication designed to balance the chemical makeup of the human body. In other words, I don't care if you're taking Zoloft or Prozac, smoking weed, popping mollies, uh, sipping on scissor. I don't care what you're doing, smoking crack, hitting that hair on. It doesn't make a difference. Nothing that you introduce into the body chemically will take the place of what God introduces into the soul to balance the mind and put the mind at ease. So we are off track. We are full in the church. We are, we are shouting, we're dancing, we're singing, but we're mentally ill. The, the preacher is mentally ill because he reads the book. And he reads the book looking to find something to excite us so that he can keep us coming back. Hit the drum for me. And you got to shout and you got to. And then once he gets you in that state of uh, euphoria, then he brings in all of this good stuff. Talking low. Jesus wants you to have it. and You just got to pay your tithes. And, you, and we can't do without it. It is a drug. It is a mental dis-ease. Most of the manufactured medications on the market today will prove to have little to no effect on the underlying issues surrounding mental illness because those medications are designed to manipulate the mind. Ministers are manipulating the minds of the congregation, not all of them, but a vast majority of them in Islam, in Christianity, minds are being manipulated. That you will do a job that they want you to do, not in accordance to God's law, but in accordance to what they want. And when doing this, we are, 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 are mixing up the chemical uh, balance of the brain and the soul and the heart and causing the body to be in a state of dis-ease. So I said earlier that we are all suffering from mental illness. And we're all suffering in this mental state of, of dis-ease because of what man's hands has done to us. But we're focusing on the mental illness that is affecting us because of our separation from God. Now, what we experience in terms of mental confusion today is caused by an imbalance in the soul and more specifically in the soul of the mind. Because many of us think that the only mind we have is the brain. But the brain is the brain. Inside of the brain is the mind. Inside of the heart is a mind. That's why people said, I think too much with my heart. Because there's a mind. Inside of the sexual organs is a mind. When you become a nymphomaniac, you can't control your sexual desires. That is a part of your mind. So the scripture says, let that mind be in you, which is also in Christ. Well, where is the mind? What is the mind? We're in Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Let that mind be in you, which was also in Jesus Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, 
but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of a man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the father. Now this is a scripture from one to five verses, but in that scripture, if it is just repeated, you take it verbatim and you don't see what's in it. Now it says in eight and be, and being found in fashion as a man, that God is a man. Jesus took the form of God in a man. So God is not this spirit or spook that we're looking for out in space. God is a man. Not only is he a man, he is inside of man because it states here that Jesus being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But what is this cross? Is it this thing that we hang around our necks that goes horizontal and vertically and we just hang it there as a representation that we love Jesus Christ. The cross is something that is within each individual. The cross is the point of where confusion comes in the mind, where we either call on God and fight the confusion, or we submit to the satanic thought and do what we want to do. The cross is a part of the ego. Jesus picked up his cross and he told you and I to pick up ours, but we never pick it up. So in that um, uh, rebellious mind of not wanting to pick up our cross, mental disease takes place. And there is a satanic force that loves the idea that that mental disease is taking place because we're in this Garden of Eden. And here comes this person that whispers to Eve and says, look here, God don't want you to be like him. He's holding back from you because he's jealous of you. So even in the scripture, the, the one that rewrote the book, you know, this is the King James version of the book. The one that rewrote the book says, the Lord thy God is a jealous God. You can't put no punk emotion like jealousy on God. God is not a jealous God. How can a person who creates everything be jealous? I can create more. So in the scripture, God proves to you, I take out nations. I, I raise nations. I destroy nations. I raise nations. How can a God be jealous of you and me? Satan is whispering into the ears of man, causing mental disease, causing mental suffering, making us think that the more we get financially, monetarily, materialistically, the happier we'll be. But the reality of that is the more we get, the more we want. Now, Jesus Christ is, is an excellent example of one free from mental illness, as I stated earlier, because he picked up his cross and doing his trial with his cross, he succeeded. And I'm going to prove that in a minute by God's permission. So here Jesus says he takes up his cross. He's free from mental illness, free from mental defect or disease of the mind. He was sent into the world at a time when rebellion to God and God's law was at an all time high. Does that sound familiar? So high, in fact, that each generation being born into the world had no blueprint of how to be righteous or what righteousness consisted of. See, our children have no idea what righteousness is. It's not in the church. I don't want to hurt your heart. It's barely in the mosque. I don't want to hurt your heart, but this has to be said. The liars are in the church. The pimps are in the church. The prostitutes are in the church. The homosexual is in the church. The gambler, the politician, they're in the church with no intentions of changing who they are. You come as you are with the desire to change, but no one has a desire to change just to integrate their evil 
into religion. You can take it. I'm writing. I'm reading to you what was put on me to read and I'm going to read it and I'm going to say it. If you take offense to it, I'm sorry. I'm talking about me, too. There's no one around that can teach our children what righteousness is because we're liars. Grandma, grandpa, daddy, mama, we we lie about everything. We never did nothing wrong. I don't know why people don't like me. I don't do nothing wrong. But you gossip all day, every day. You underhanded, you're conniving, you're sneaky, you're a devil, you and me. But we don't, we don't know why nobody don't like us. We don't know. Because you won't search inside of yourself like that awesome and great and glorious example of Jesus Christ who searched inside of himself and took on the battle of that horizontal and that vertical fight. We don't want to do that. We want to take our dirt with us as we go. This is a mental illness. This is the same illness that Adam and Eve had. The same illness that the gods have. In fact, in each generation, each generation is being born into the world with no blueprint on on, on how to be righteous or what righteousness consists of. So we begin to build. Listen to this now. We begin to build golden calves or false engraved images that we could label as our God. The images soothe the mind for a time and convince us that whatever we desire to do in the name of God would be acceptable. So we persist, uh, uh, we persist up, we consist, persist up until this very day in in confronting or comforting our minds, but destroying our souls. We are lovers of massaging the brain. Oh, you so beautiful, baby. You, I just love you so much. You know, you can't find no goodness in yourself. So it takes somebody else to tell you that it's there. That's mental illness. You can't be by yourself for a long period of time. You got to have an entourage all the time. Somebody telling you how great you are all the time. I look on Facebook and see so many mentally ill people that got to be posting something up all the time, wanting to get a a hit, wanting to get a like. We like what you're saying. Sick, mentally ill. Now, we make these images to soothe ourselves, like that image of that white Jesus with the long hair. Yeah, I said it, the white Jesus with the long hair. I was going to put the image up. But I changed my mind because that is not Jesus. If you look in your history far enough, if you really want to know, you will find out that that image was painted by Michael Angelo, if I'm not mistaken, who painted, who wanted to make an image of Jesus. And he painted his uncle and, and named that picture of his uncle, Jesus, a white guy. Now, there are white prophets. There are white messengers. There has to be because God is merciful. He sends someone to everyone. But if God sent a black person to white people to tell them what they were doing wrong, do you think they would be acceptable of that black person? Do you think they would sit down and listen to what he is saying? The book says that he had feet like brass burned in an oven, hair like lamb's wool. That ain't, that's not that picture that you're looking at. See, images and mental illness are kind of like one in the same in a sense, because we become confused. We build these golden calves to make ourselves to soothe that, that soul in us that can't be soothed because we're in a state of dis-ease because we're so disconnected from God. I got to say it. Listen to what I'm saying and don't put nothing else in. Oh, oh, brother Johnny, don't believe in Jesus. I didn't say that. I know Jesus Christ. I know him. And I believe that the God gave him the power to be an example for us. So don't put me in a box. You can't do that. Only Allah will permit that. But I'm talking about those who create things to soothe their mind. Delusions, illusions. 
So we persist up until this very day in comforting our minds by but destroying our soul. See, the soul does not agree with what we're doing. The soul inside of you and I are not in agreement with what we're doing, but we want all of the feeling, all of the pleasure. So everything we do in life is for our feelings, for us, not for the soul. So the soul is dying. The soul of each individual desires to leave from us because we are destroying it. We have not taken up our cross. I don't care how big the church is, how big the cross is on top of it. I don't care if you wear as many cross around your neck like Mr. T. Until we take on that cross or that battle within self, we're not doing anything but talking. Talking and doing are two different things. We're destroying our souls. We gain favor and reward as a result of our worldly acceptance of the way things are. Because the way things are is the way we desire them to be. So me talking, I wouldn't get invited to to preach at none of the local churches in Manning, South Carolina. I'm the rebel. But if I got on here and said Jesus 2,000 times for an hour, I would have my book full of of appointments to be speaking at church. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I would be the man. But when you come with anything of truth, you are ostracized because he's going to break up the world that we built in our minds. And the world is separate from the mind of God. And that's why it is written in the book to remind us, let that mind be in you. That is in Jesus Christ. Now, our twisted desires are, in fact, reverting us back to the physical and mental condition of the Caucasians that I mentioned earlier in the case of Europe. We are gradually turning into savage beast. We are reacting upon every feeling, emotion that we have without thinking. We are reacting on it. I read uh, yesterday, unfortunately, that... um, a young man who broke up with his girlfriend decided he going to kill everybody. So he goes in the house. He takes a picture of him and his little daughter. She's three years old. This is a black man. Then he shoots her, his daughter in the head, killing her. I think he tried to kill his girlfriend. She got away and then he blowed his and then he shot himself. But I don't think he died. I read in the paper on yesterday where a 11 year old boy, black, dropped his seven-year-old brother black on his head repeatedly seven times until he killed him because he was jealous of him. See, these are the mental illnesses that are coming out of us. They won't be uh, a left inside. And I'm going to read the passage in the Bible that bears witness to this fact that the mental illnesses that we are suffering from will be made manifest. And until we confess to those sins, those mind uh, manipulations that we are going through, We're going to have to try to battle them on our own and that we cannot do and that no drug can do. We're talking about mental illness and our disconnection from God. This is the root of it. We're going to get into some more things in another time, God willing. But now we're talking about this. So here we are, savages, shooting, killing for color. I'm red, you blue. I'm going to kill your whole family. Shooting, killing for drugs. Shooting, killing because you stepped on my shoe. This is black people now. We come into the church or into the religious institutions with no intentions of changing our ways for God's glory. Instead, we manipulate God's words until we change it to fit who and what we desire to be. So the prostitute, the hustler, the trickster, the politician, the homosexual, the womanizer, the adulterer all come into the church mentally ill and are still mentally ill because they have no desire to change. How long you been to church? How long your preacher known you've been a homosexual in the church? When have they counseled you on that type of behavior and try to get to the root of it? Or is it that you desire to be it because you love the feeling? You love kissing a man. You love kissing a woman. Going into a man. Going into a woman. You don't want to change. What does God say about it? What does God say about me, about you? And I'm not pointing fingers. I could never point fingers. I am you. We are each other. We are devils, if you will, fighting. 
to control this cross, to make it a beautiful thing. But we won't take on that internal fight. So the mental illness continues inside. Meanwhile, we look good outside. Everybody just smiling. Just whoop, the Lord, whoop. But dying inside, liars. It's been done this way for so long that the soul wants to separate itself from the man. The soul is in torment. The soul of man is in hell every moment of every hour trying to convince the individual to pay attention to the inner workings of the mind. Look inside of yourself. The answer is there so that the desire for change would become a reality in the soul until such time. The result, the reality of mental illness will constantly manifest itself through the actions of the mentally ill individual. This is true. We are not fighting the battle. We succumb to every evil thought that we got. We just go with it. Hmm. Okay, let's get our Bibles again. We're in Mark 8, 34 through 38. And I want to read this. Mark 34. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross and follow me. Wait a minute. What? Deny yourself? Deny your selfish desires? Deny your ego? Deny your desire for money, wealth? Deny it all? Deny your homosexual tendencies? Deny your adulterous tendencies deny your gangster tendencies deny your lying and and maniacal tendencies your plutocratical tendencies megalomaniac tendencies what but the people in the church aren't denying this much of us we're trying to make our desires cohesive to god's desire now if jesus took up a, if jesus took up a cross 2000 years ago and carry that cross. Now he's telling you to pick up your cross. You can't pick up his cross. It's, it's gone. That was 2,000 years ago. What cross is he saying to pick up? Deny yourself. And take up your cross. And follow me. For whosoever will save his life. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Hmm. But whosoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. So whosoever desires to be in this world and live his way, live a thousand years, you already lost it because your soul is gone. But whosoever picks up that cross and dies, all of that internal ego dies. Now, all of a sudden, Jesus says, you saved. But wait a minute. I see people walking around, smoking a cigarette, hugging a man, hugging a woman, huh? engaging in all type of perversion, but they say what? I'm saved. Well, that's a lie. And since it is a lie, then that means that we are tempting God. Jesus said, don't do that, but we are doing it. Don't get mad at me. Look at my face. This is not me talking. Don't get upset with me. I got to tell it to you and I got to tell it to me. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Wait a minute. There's that word again. The soul. We're losing it. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What will you give for? See, we want to ransom everything for that. It's that important. But what will you give for? Will you give up yourself? We're talking about black mental illness. We're getting to the root of black mental illness because it is necessary. Because there is no medication that can fix the soul. Now, granted, the mind of us is so messed up. We need medication. We need counseling. We need uh, hope, prayer. Uh, exorcism we need it all medication too but the soul can't be fixed with medication 
The soul has to be fixed with the agreeance of the soul with what God says. Don't get upset with me. I'm just telling you what I got to tell you. I told you before, by God's permission, I got to get the blood off of my hands. I got six boys and one girl. I got to get the blood off because they can't make it through it. They don't have, they don't know where to start. Have no idea, have no clue. And no one helped me to start. God came direct. Showed me, you can take it or leave it. Or what shall it give, give in exchange for the soul? Whosoever therefore shall be. And don't, don't, don't misunderstand now. I don't walk around on a cloud. None of that. Uh, that's not the, the God that I know. So don't, don't misunderstand it. It don't work that way. I'm trying to become a man. And I want our young boys, black boys, to become men. Not only men, but men of God. Not shysty men. Not men who can roll their neck more than a woman. A man. Something none of us don't know about. Money don't make you a man. Manhood is something else that, that, that's in the soul. See, Jesus ain't had no money. Think on that for a minute. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of, of him also shall the son of man be ashamed. What did Jesus call this generation? Adulterous, sinful generation. Say they, they ashamed of Jesus when he cometh in the glory of his father with the holy angels. We don't even like the man. We just like the image that we made of the man because we made the image. So we can make that, we can stand by it, we can sit by it, we can talk about it, we can vision it, we can do everything with it because we made it. Let's move on. We're going, we're running out of time now. The cross represents the struggle. Listen to this. The cross represents the struggle of Jesus the Christ. It is a reminder to each individual of the struggle that we must endure in order to meet with our inner Christ. The cross represents conflict in the very soul of man and woman. The battle between what God wants and what we desire. This is this was the struggle of Adam and Eve. This is the main theme throughout all religious literature, every Bible and Quran, all of them. Scripture is describing the battle of our minds and the extent of mental illness that affects us as a result of conflict with the soul. You you know how God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? What, what did he what did he destroy it for? The men were falling down on men, women falling down on men. I mean, women falling down on women, men falling down on men, corruption throughout the city to the point that everyone had gone savage. So savage, in fact, that God sent angels to Sodom and Gomorrah. And what did the men say? Send them angels out so we can sleep with them. And what did Lot say? I got I got my wives. I got my daughters. So you can have them. We don't want your daughters. We want to sleep with them. So the mind is gone so savage, right? We are in agreement with that. We don't want to call our church. That God could not, didn't even want to take the time any longer to revert. He sent enough warnings. So he said, I'm going to destroy it all. Wait a minute. Now look at, look at Abraham. God came to him told him what he was going to do. I think it's Abraham, if I'm mistaken, forgive me. Abraham. Abraham says, surely you're not going to kill everybody. God said, I tell you what, go down there and find a thousand righteous. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He came back, can't find a thousand. Go back and find 500. He came back, can't find 500. Well, find three. I can't find three. Well, then shut up because I'm going to destroy them because there's nothing there of value. The soul is dead. We're talking about mental illness and the eventual outcome of that mental illness of the soul is destruction. As the scripture states, most of us have lost our souls. And as a result of that loss, we compensate the emptiness of that loss by engaging in activities that stimulate our senses or make us feel good. It makes us feel alive. We feel alive when we challenge or tempt God. We feel free when we can, we can conjure up images and ideas that cause us to feel something. 
It's at this point that Satan steps in and begins to answer the desires of our heart. So in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, there was a desire in the heart of Adam and Eve. And Satan just came along and whispered and they reacted to the whisper. You ever see the cartoons where they have the devil on one shoulder and God on the other? There's always something constantly whispering in your ear. You got a choice. You can fight, pick up your cross, or you can succumb and go with Satan. That's that's the choice. And God gives us that choice. And that's why the church is full with Satan. Because in the holy places where Satan going to dwell, read your Bible. Whence cometh thou, Satan? Said the holy, the holy ones were coming and Satan was coming with them. Where you coming from, God asked. Oh, I'm just, I'm just checking out these holy folk, looking for somebody I can take with me. Uh-oh. Well, we're talking about mental illness. And we're talking about what's happening with us. Because someone has to say it. We're talking about mental illness and we're going back to the root of the problem in order to work forward towards a permanent solution to this disease. Adam and Eve were mentally ill. All of the nations, kingdoms, princesses, kings, rulers, pharaohs, ancient gods, all of them suffered from mental illness that manifested itself through hypocrisy and destruction of the soul. Each rebellious mind is allowed to go off and make a world based upon its rebellious thoughts. So every nation that you see before you is a nation, city, town, or country built based upon thoughts that were and are contrary to God's thoughts. What do you think America is? The people that, that made this America that you see, Christopher Columbus coming from England, these were prisoners. They were in prison. They were so evil, so diabolical, so maniacal, locked up. The only way you can get out of prison is to go make a world of your own. So they set sail. And what did they do? From the Caribbean to the Cayman Islands to Jamaica to here where we are, find somebody already there, kill them. The Indians were Murdered, slaughtered. This is true. Make your own world with your evil. And so in each individual now, we got our own world. I don't care what nobody say. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm in my own space. <laughs> okay. So you can see the natural or the nature of rebellion by watching the actions and reactions of the people who are tempted by the lower selves. You can look at it. You can see a 70 year old woman today with a miniskirt on with thongs on. You can see that because that is her desire. You can see nations drop bombs on people and kill them, disfigure their children, leave chemicals in the water, the land. That's their desire. You can see that or you can turn a blind eye to it. You can see the minister in your church manipulating the women, sleeping, rubbing, tapping, stealing, and you will accept it. That's your desire. That's my desire. We're filthy down to the core and the soul that God placed in us is ready to leave. So you can stand up before the day of judgment, whenever that is, and hold your hands up and think God is coming to get your physical self. He coming back to get what he deposited in us. That God soul. That's why he says to hold on with the faith at least the size of a mustard seed. And I see you. But we ain't even got that. We're crazy as hell. Because we in hell. We're talking about mental illness. Our children today have no desire. But to do what they want to do. They have no desire for rules or regulations. Satan has played on that lack of desire. And our children are becoming a lawless generation due to the temptation of the devil within themselves. I don't care if they got degrees in law, if they are doctors, if they play sports, they just wicked doctors, wicked sports players, wicked uh, 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 teachers. That's why the teacher sleeping with the students. That's why the, uh, the, 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 the football and hockey leagues are in the condition that they're in. That's why the doctors are taking organs out of the body and feeding you and I pills and drugs we don't need because we're answering the desire of the heart. Now we're coming to a close. 
In Luke 4, 5 and 13, I'm going to read this. And the devil take, take, this is, this is Jesus building his cross. And this is the devil that tempts you and I, and we succumb to, but Jesus didn't. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, showed him all of the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time, all in a moment like that. I show it all to you. And the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them. For this is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I, I, whosoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him alone shall thy serve. Jesus passed his test. Adam and Eve didn't. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands, they shall bear thee up. Least at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, saying unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Listen to that. I met a man. I hadn't seen him in a while. I said, I haven't seen you in a while. He was a painter. Oh, yeah, I didn't had two heart attacks since then. Oh, really? Are you eating better, taking better care of yourself? I'm trying to. We were at a party. They had a big pig on the table. He went over to the pig table to get some pork. I said, you had a heart attack. In high blood pressure related to heart attacks? Well, I ain't worried about that. I believe in Jesus Christ. I just say a prayer over it and let the Lord handle it. Now, but Jesus says, and this was a deacon. But Jesus says, thou shalt not tempt the Lord. Jesus said, don't tempt him. But we say, I don't care. God going to take care of it. So we tempt all the time. It's not what goes in my body, which defileth a man. So you want to drink. You try to find something in the book to, to justify your dirt. Evil to the core we are. Yet we claim Jesus. Oh, Lord. Now look at this. And when the devil had ended all the temptations, he departed from him for a season. Now, many of us think just because we get dipping in the water and come back up that we good to go. This says that the devil departed for a season, which means he will return in the form of something else. So you quit smoking, but you start eating. Now you're big as a house, you're still sick. Satan is a shapeshifter. But on the internet, I see they're always trying to show you where these people are shifting their eyes and turning into reptiles and all kind of stuff. That, that's not what it's talking about. Satan comes in the form that you least expect to control the thinking. We got to go on. Now, depression and mental illness don't just pop up out of the blue. It is a gradual up buildup of confusion, pain, abuse, depression, doubt, hate, self-hate, and most importantly, fear, and the mind's disconnection from the soul or the God spirit. This is our starting point. We are disconnected while well, we are disconnected from the source of joy and happiness. So we created a world of false joy and false happiness. This false world is temporary and therefore cannot keep us happy. It is only for a season. As it says in uh, the scripture that I just read that Satan only left for a season. As it is stated in Luke 4 and 13, the devil will periodically leave. But he's coming back to tempt you again. It is at this point that we drop our guard and think that we are safe because I'm saved. I, I'm saved. I think that we are free from temptation. Satan leaves for a time, but he will always return to test us again and again. He is a shapeshifter. He comes in sheep's clothing. His presence in the world is to make us either submit to him or to turn to God. That is the the, the desire that is the, 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 the good part of Satan is that he's going to make you see <clears throat> that either you have to turn to him or go to God. We're in the first stage of mental illness. Now, this is what we're talking about. It came directly from our rebellion from God. That is the first stage and it is the gradual destruction of the soul. I really do want to close with this. And we're in King James Bible. Second Thessalonians one through 12. And I want you to listen to this very closely because it will explain a lot of what we're going through today. Now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that ye be not sh soon shaken in mind. Be not shaken in your mind. Be not confused in your mind 
as it says that ye be not soon shaken in the mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of Christ is at hand we in it let no man be deceived let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there comes a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed it didn't say the spook of sin it didn't say the devil of sin it didn't say the hat of sin or the uh, uh all of these uh, ghosts and stuff we say of sin it said the man of sin it, it even gives them the title of a man and that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who oppos- who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called god you know anybody who ex- exalt themselves above god's law i know a lot of them. me too because i want to do what i want to do i guess i have to check myself and i try by god's grace to check myself it's a stressful life to live it's stressful night and day you're checking yourself but it has to be it won't be always we'll get relief from it but you got to start looking inside of yourself and saying am i right Should I condemn everybody? Am I the only person right because I got some stuff? God gives everybody stuff. Drug dealers got stuff. Prostitutes got stuff. Prostitutes live better than the average person. Big mansions and and, and condos. They got stuff. So you can't label God's blessings as stuff. Now they uphold, they exalt themselves above all, above all that is called God or that is worship so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. I keep having to tell you the same thing. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of in, for the mystery of inequity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let. Until I, until he be taken out of the way. Only the ones who just submit to the evil. You get the evil. It looks good. It feels good. But, and I'm going to let it. I'm going to let it be, God said. I'm going to let it. Only those who know, let, now let, will let. Until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Now, once you done build up all this sin, I'm going to reveal to you your wickedness. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Boy, Satan got powers. Satan got signs and Satan be healing people with lying wonders and ah, and falling out and dipping and flipping and spitting in buckets and dancing and stripping. And boy, what? That's what the Bible says. Lying wonders. You can't throw up no sin. Sorry. No, you cannot. You a homosexual today. You ain't going to throw it up and stop being a homosexual. It's a gradual process. You a liar today. You ain't going to throw up being a liar. You a liar today. You a liar tomorrow. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of truth. You, you don't like me because I'm telling this. I'm talking to myself and you still don't like me. You still saying he, he think he know everything. He knows everything. You won't accept truth. I don't care who it comes from. You won't accept it. You only accept the comfortable lie. Let it. That they might be saved. They won't, they don't, you don't want to be saved because you, you accept the lie. I'm going to read that again. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, listen to what God said he's going to do since we love sin so much. And for this cause, God shall send strong delusions that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. This is Brother Johnny of Groove 19 Promotions out of Manning, South Carolina. Our time is up. I thank you so much for listening again. 
Um, this is part one of um, mental illness. And I wanted to go directly to the source of the problem, which is our disconnection from God, our reality, our desire to tell truth, our desire to receive truth. Again, this is Brother Johnny of Group 19 Promotions. If you find out that what has been said today has value, share the information, I beg of you. Thank you all for tuning in to The 19 Report. <laughs>